This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on 39 Dunedin News, local ANZ branches are targeted by protesters who are upset at the bank's investments in fossil fuels. Tertiary students come up with a tasty idea that could result in a reduction in food waste. And proponents of our third official language target some education institutions in a bid to increase its popularity. Good evening, Dunedin. I'm Rebecca Dupree. Customers of local ANZ branches are being encouraged to put pressure on the bank to divest money from fossil fuels. Protesters thwarted business at three of the bank's central city locations today as police monitored the situation and the action isn't over. Shutting down business. About 150 protesters were preventing customers from accessing three ANZ branches in George Street today. They were opposing the bank's reported $13.5 billion investment in the fossil fuel industry. All of the major banks operating in New Zealand are pretty complicit in this. They all have um, pretty significant fossil fuel investments. Um, but ANZ has the most of all the banks operating in Australia and New Zealand, and they lend the most to new fossil fuel projects in Australia. The 350 Aotearoa protest also involved members of Oil Free Otago and followed action in Auckland, Hamilton, Wellington and Christchurch. ANZ literally has the power to make or break new fossil fuel projects and as we know we have to keep 80% of the known fossil fuel reserves in the ground and have no excuse to be looking for any more. So we're out here today to say no to business as usual and that ANZ need to start taking responsibility for their impact on climate change. New Zealand bank managers have reportedly been distancing themselves from the corporation's fossil fuel investments, but the bank was a major sponsor of the National Petroleum Summit. Protesters blame executives, but say local business and profits feed into the company and they're targeting even the smallest customers. We really hope that um, the people who bank with ANZ, that this is a bit of a wake-up call to them about what their bank's doing, um, and it alerts them to the fact that their money is going to fund climate change. At least eight police officers were deployed to monitor the protest, which began just before 9am. We intend to stay until the bank closes down for the day. Um, and sends their staff home and acknowledges that business as usual cannot continue. 350 Aotearoa is calling on ANZ to divest all of its money from fossil fuels. That means a moratorium on all new lending to associated projects and the phasing out of existing investments. Another large protest is being planned for Auckland tomorrow. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. Local ratepayers are facing a 2.97% increase in civic fees for the next financial year. The Dunedin City Council completed deliberations on its annual plan earlier today, following extensive community consultation and discussion. Council has finally settled on spending, which keeps the rates increased below 3%. They're utilising a million dollars of money, which had been earmarked for cricket patch lights. Just over 150,000 was also shaved off budgets from the draft annual plan. A hearing for the council's second generation district plan also began today. An average of between 30 and 50 per cent of food is wasted in New Zealand. It's a problem that many are tackling at a grassroots level. And University of Otago food science students are aiming to educate their peers with a tasty concept. Taking science to the table. These fourth-year University of Otago food science students are hoping to teach their classmates about not wasting food during a special feast on campus. We have gone through the pig bin at Veggie Boys. Uh, so Veggie Boys is a, a sponsoring the event, um, which is great. Uh, and some of the food has been foraged. The idea of hosting a zero-waste banquet resulted from the students being given an open project brief. Menu items have been designed around leftovers and produce for disposal. 
Dr Morosa's passionate about reducing food waste and says her students dug deep for the cause. She says most people throw away good parts of plants and animals that can be used. All the recipes have been created to use things that people just have laying around the house. Um, there's some neat recipes, there's one using banana peels, uh, so there's a banana peel cake which I'm looking forward to. Um, there's a recipe involving some offal, uh, some liver, uh, again it should be fantastic and, and again the, the advice is just use all the, the stalks, you know, the broccoli stalks are edible. Team member Francesca Goodman-Smith believes many of her generation are also passionate about reducing food waste. She says the idea for this event came organically. We sat around and brainstormed some ideas that we thought could be cool and I'd recently visited the farmers market and saw um, Alison Lambert who runs a caravan there and she uses local food um, to make dishes and things which is really cool and another lady called Victoria Madison and she um, has just started the Revival Food Company and she makes things like compost cookies and things like that. The students have also produced a cookbook of meals with upcycled ingredients for banquet guests to take home. They'll be able to try making recipes in the Food Science Laboratory after tonight's meal and demonstrations. Daryl Baser, 39, Dunedin News. The owners of a Jack Russell Terrier which bit their baby daughter in the face are having the dog put down. Subsequently, the Dunedin City Council is not pursuing action against them in relation to the incident. It happened yesterday afternoon at Tai Nui in the family's home. The Jack Russell reportedly bit the baby girl on the face and she's receiving treatment in Dunedin Hospital. Her parents also own another dog which wasn't involved in the attack. Both canines were registered and had no previous record of violence. New Zealand Sign Language Week is turning 10 this year, but uptake of the country's third official language remains poor. To counter that, members of Deaf Aotearoa are offering sign language tips for beginners, and they've been targeting the local tertiary sector. Communicating without speech. Otago Polytechnic students and staff have been learning sign language firsthand from members of Deaf Aotearoa. They were teaching people how to order drinks at a pop-up cafe on campus. And we're working with Deaf Aotearoa as part of their 10th anniversary for New Zealand Sign Language Week. And it's a really exciting event going on, as you can see in the background. We're teaching people to sign their names, fingerspell their names. And um, we're doing all sorts of things, teaching them phrases, other things, and having lots of fun to boot. This week also marks the 10th anniversary of New Zealand Sign Language, becoming the third official language of Aotearoa, alongside English and Te Reo Māori. Fogarty's hoping events like this, and one planned by Deaf Aotearoa for this Saturday's farmers market, will encourage people to give signing a go. I think certainly with resources and um, commitment that long term things could definitely change, but it takes engagement by everyone I guess for things like that to change, so we all need to be open to learning something um, new. I think. Today I found lots of young people are really keen, lots of them have learned it in high school, they don't find it too difficult. Possibly for people in my generation it's a wee bit more challenging, I'm a bit of a fumbler with my fingers I have to say, and I've probably needed to learn it a few times and a wee bit slower at picking it up. There will be two workshops for teaching NZ Sign Language at the Polytechnic later this month. The main message from Deaf Aotearoa is for people to simply give it a go. Daryl Baser, 39, Dunedin News. Still to come on 39 Dunedin News, a local musician prepares for a trans-Tasman battle and we'll find out why a visiting author says Dunedin is on the right path to interfaith peace. Dog with Two Tails Cafe and Bar on Moray Place. Proud supporters of New Zealand Music Month, May 2016. Hi, this time of year we like to keep our customers warm and comfortable and we sell a lot of moleskins and we've got them all on special. Check out these, Tussock Cream, two weights and they're a great price. We also sell Lee Stretch Moleskins, five different colours, short and regular, great buy, Moleskins, Alex Campbell means we're three stores. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region, Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. 
New Zealand Beeswax Limited are the quintessential beeswax woodwear and beekeeping suppliers. From the amateur beekeeper to the commercial operator, New Zealand Beeswax Limited has the quantity to meet your needs. For great prices, great service New Zealand wide, contact New Zealand Beeswax Limited on 03 693 9189 or visit www.beeswax.co.nz. For professional, reliable and approachable service where your dream kitchen design can become an affordable reality, Contact the team at Kitchens for Less. Call 455-9973 or visit us online. We're a 25 Moro place at Dogwood Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced sort of cheeklings, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. It's on again. The Star Regent 24 hour book sale starts noon 10th of June. Don't miss out! Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs, and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaikoro Valley Road. Visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488 5676. She's 21 metres long with a 6.7 metre beam. She can support diving, seafloor mapping and sampling, deep water measurements and has onboard laboratories. She has a range of 1,000 nautical miles, which means the Polaris 2 can take your studies further than you ever thought possible. My name's Will Raymond and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. Pregnant, need to talk, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Pregnancy counselling services are here to help. It's free, it's confidential. Call us now on 0800 773 462. Tune in on Thursday for Motorsport Night on Dunedin Television. Welcome back. The median house price in Otago has reached a record high, up $24,000 compared to a year ago. It's a 9% jump overall, and in Dunedin, properties are also selling for that much more. Compared to last April, sales volumes are up by 35% across the region and 37% in Dunedin. There were 254 houses sold in the city last month. The average price was $315,000. And on that note, let's take a look at today's financials. The NZX50 has closed the day down 21 points, now at 6,923. The Dow Jones is down 217 points. And to the exchange rates, and the Kiwi dollar is up against all the currencies we follow. A Dunedin school teacher is preparing to compete against other Australasian musicians for the Trans Tasman Entertainer of the Year Award. Calvin Cummings won last year's Golden Guitar Awards, gaining entry to the upcoming event. And he joins us now to talk about it. Good evening. Evening. What is the competition that you're about to enter? It's the Trans Tasman Entertainer of the Year, which is like a big country music kind of letters low cup, oh, uh, I suppose, yeah, between New Zealand and Australia. Where is it being held? 
Norfolk Island, kind of an impartial mm. kind of middle ground between the two places. Yeah. Yeah. And who you're up against? I'm up against four other New Zealanders, uh, Phoebe uh, Ball, Jenna Keating, Zara Buckton, Tegan Reid. Uh, so they're uh, from up north mm -hmm. uh, who ended up winning spots with Country Music Awards up there. And I'm up against a whole pile of Australians there as well. So there's five from over there, uh, Jasmine Atkin, uh, Matthew Pratt, who's amazing, uh, Sam Madison, Judy Kelly, and... Uh, Macara Grant Freeman. So mm -hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm only familiar with a couple of those guys, but like I have seen a bit of them online, and they're they're yeah. pretty good. Yeah. How do you feel about your ability to come away with a win? I'm quietly confident. Mm -hmm. I I know that I put a lot of hard work into what I do, and um, the the songs I've like put forward towards this event, I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to showcase what I can do really really well with it. Mm -hmm. What preparation have you been doing? Lots of singing mm. lo um, throughout um, New, Ze or New Zealand and Dunedin. Um, lots of songwriting as well, which has been able to kind of create my sound a little bit more. Mm. Uh, but ultimately just being able to uh, prepare as much as I can with uh, playing the guitar, making sure that I'm singing all the right notes at the right time, lyrics is really important, mm. and um, thinking about all the incidental showcasey sort of things, like how do you react with an audience and things. What is the most exciting aspect of being involved? Being involved in this, just to be given the invite to come, because it's a it's purely an invite only event, mm -hmm. um, so um, not anybody can enter it, and to be able to you know, put your New Zealand uh, badge on and mm -hmm. be able to represent the country is really special. Is this the biggest music contest you've been in? It would be the the biggest one in regards to country music, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you fit your music in around your job? It's a hard thing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, be, being a high school teacher, um, I'm, I'm busy nine to five. In fact, later, a lot of other times doing the teaching in class and then the planning around that. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a very understanding high school at East Otago, and they've, um, after winning gold guitars, they've been really accommodating to be able to help me out, and we've even got Aero coming in next week. So, um, unfortunately, I, I miss them coming through, and um, they've been really, really helpful to be able to make sure that um, all my T's are crossed and my I's are dotted so mm -hmm. that everybody's happy there at school while I'm away. Have you got a strategy for wowing the judges this time? Uh, there's, there's always the ability to be able to give them a little bit of charm, but it, I suppose, if anything, country music's one of those sorts of genres where you can't be over the top. Uh, people can spot a fake a mile away, and if you, if you go in there with a really, really honest product and you, you just showcase what you can do and do it really, really well and, and prove to them that you, you are what they are looking for, then then, fingers crossed, I'll be able to walk away with a big trophy at the end. It can be quite difficult for, mus for musicians to, to make a career out of music in this country. What advice would you give to budding musicians? Um, ultimately, uh, prepare, prepare, prepare. Make sure that you've got as much as you can of your work. Um, it's not a bad thing to be able to create um, your own sound as well. A mm. uh, friend of mine, uh, Finley um, Brentwood, ended up um, creating a few covers of different things, and he's just been snapped up in Australia for... Um, uh, covers there uh, for that new movie that's going to be coming out. So it's, it's really exciting for um, everybody if they're able to create their own kind of take on things and be able to be as unique as possible. Yeah. Mm. Well, all the best in the competition, Calvin Cummings. Thanks very much for your time. Thank you very much. After the break on 39 Dunedin News, peace between faiths is discussed locally and changes in the delivery of news are coming our way. We'll take a look at what's in store. Sir Bob Charles, New Zealand's greatest golfer and still going strong. I'm sure that Sportsville was a contributing factor to my success and I'll continue to use it. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville, a product so good he puts his name to it. Well, I believe Sportsville helps maintain your quality of life. Now being used by active men and women globally to support strength and mobility. It works for me. Sir Bob Charles Sportsville in the new All Black Pack. Call now for the Sportsville special 0800 502 402. We're a 25 Moro place at Dog with Tails Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass produced sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Finding that your grass seed just won't grow, 
ReadyLawn has the perfect solution for all those lawn woes. Call ReadyLawn today on 486-1819. Mobility scooters are targets. Mobility scooters, new and used, electric manual wheelchairs, strollers and walkers, free home demonstration and delivery. Call Tony on 03 455 2875 or visit our showroom, 211 King Edward Street, opposite Westpac. Tech Limited have been supplying beekeeping equipment and honey products in New Zealand for over 100 years. A specialist manufacturer of hiveware and plastic products for the beekeeping industry. They are the leading supplier of beekeeping equipment nationwide. For all your beekeeping needs visit ecrotech.co.nz or call 0800 11 7766. 128 tracks. Dynamic automation, dual faders, and totally digital. This is state-of-the-art music production. The SSL Digital Console. You'll find one in the BBC Studios in London, another at CBS Studios in New York, and now one at the University of Otago. It's a good reason why our sound now sounds even better. My name is Maddie Parkins Craig, and this is my place in the world. Take your place in the world. Hi, this time of year we like to keep our customers warm and comfortable and we sell a lot of moleskins and we've got them all on special. Check out these, Tussock Creek, two weights and they're a great price. We also sell Lee Stretch moleskins, five different colours, short and regular, great buying, moleskins, Alex Campbell means we're three stores. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region, Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. Dog with Two Tails Cafe and Bar on Moray Place. Proud supporters of New Zealand Music Month, May 2016. Here's something else to look forward to sinking your teeth into every weekend with the Otago Daily Times. The Weekend Mix, your guide to what's hot in fashion, entertainment, food and more. New Weekend Magazine in your ODT. Pick up your copy this Saturday. Welcome back. Messages of interfaith peace are being spread locally by a visiting community worker and author. He's been discussing controversial collaboration between Muslims and Christians with residents. And it appears Dunedin is on the right path. Contemplating world peace. An Australian community worker and author has been discussing religion with Dunedin residents. He's promoting his latest book, calling on Muslims and Christians to unite and work for non-violent social change. I went to Afghanistan in 1972, uh, worked there for some time, and then went on to India to work there. In both those places I met Muslims and worked with Muslims. Uh, when we returned home to Australia in 1984, we helped settle refugees. Many of those were Muslims from Afghanistan, and so we developed uh, a real appreciation uh, for Muslims. Andrews defines himself as a follower of Jesus and is involved in Christian groups and organizations. He says 9-11 opened up the chasm of suspicion between Islam and Christianity and since then he's been working on building bridges between the two faiths. He's trying to reclaim the concepts of jihad and Jesus from extremists to promote non-violence. So Christians and Muslims can come together and work cooperatively and collaboratively for peace and justice in conflict zones around the world. Paul Gawley is involved in the local multi-ethnic and multi-faith councils and says it's important to spread messages of active peace. He's happy to see locals leading the way. It's particularly now in Dunedin we see people doing it with the Syrians coming. It's so relevant that with Christians and Muslims and other faith groups working together we can show the rest of the country, indeed the rest of the world, how to create peace. Andrew's work hasn't proved as controversial as he thought it might. He's planning to continue sharing contemporary stories about people from opposing religions working together for a peaceful future. Rosie Mannins, 39, Dunedin News. 
News delivery in the south is changing. Allied Press has secured New Zealand on air funding for more regional coverage. And Otago Daily Times editor Barry Stewart joins us to explain. Good evening. Hello, Rebecca. How is news delivery set to change going forward? Wow. Well, it's, it's actually changing by the day, isn't it? And mm. we had the announcement yesterday with Fairfax and NZME, the Herald, etc. So exciting times in the industry. How's it going to change from this proposal? Mm. Well, uh, the New Zealand on-air model is, is for a broader regional uh, coverage and that fits our, our makeup nicely. We have, of course, Channel 39, Dunedin Television, we have the Otago Daily Times and 14 other community or other publications throughout our um, stable. So we are well placed within our market, which is the south from North Canterbury to Invercargill to uh, bring together a lot of this content and, and put it uh, online, uh, broadcast it. Uh, we're launching a new website very shortly and, and uh, the, the makeup of that will allow us to present this, these packages in a, in a new and vibrant, vibrant manner. Mm. Video is the uh, flavour of choice at the moment and, and it's, it's uh, what people engage with uh, on digital media and that just keeps us well and truly up, up to the pace with that. Uh, NZ on air funding, well of course we've always had it here at uh, Channel 39, mm -hmm. uh, so this is just a, an expansion of what we do. What's it going to mean for consumers? Wow, well of course they are going to get a, a whole variety of content uh, and, and good journalism from throughout the South Island. So. Uh, the, the distribution of it, we, we need to work out a lot of details, so it's very early stages in mm. this process, mm. but uh, the, the launch of it or the distribution of it will be on various websites of our regional publications, and then it will be on the Otago Lady Times, and of course it will be broadcast on Channel 39. Now you mentioned that it is in its early stages, when can we likely expect to see changes? September th September 1 is the launch date, mm -hmm. um, but um, I could uh, imagine we will be um, testing the water um, very soon. Otago Daily Times editor Barry Stewart, thanks for your time. Thank you. And now recapping tonight's top stories on 39 Dunedin News. ANZ protesters are putting pressure on the bank to divest money from fossil fuels and say customers can and should make a difference. University students are preparing a banquet using ingredients usually disposed of to educate their peers about reducing food waste. And members of Deaf Aotearoa have been teaching polytechnic students and staff how to use sign language in response to poor uptake nationwide. And it's time now to find out what's going to be in tomorrow's Otago Daily Times. And Barry Stewart's with us. Good evening. Hello, Rebecca. Well, we'll have something on the the big game that everybody's talking about, the Highlanders versus Crusaders. Mm -hmm. I was going to let you say that, but no. Um, so super, it's a, it's a sellout apparently. Um, so that's great news. So we have a look at the rivalry between those two provinces. Uh, Dunedin City Councillors have managed to use up all of their wriggle room and have, uh, have been able to keep rate rises below 3% without well done. doing undue spending. Mm. So that's good. Uh, undue cuts, I should say. So that's good. Uh, 13 jobs are cut from uh, Delta. Uh, it's a uh, Dunedin City owned company. Uh, maintenance contracts have gone to a Christchurch firm. Uh, and in Inside Out, uh, we have a look at a harbourside home. It's, it's uh, described as a dream home, a harbourside home, built on a very steep slope. It was um, just uh, wild bush, but mm. uh, they've converted it into their dream home. So have a look at that one. Probably has fabulous views as well. Over the harbour? Yeah. Absolutely. And tomorrow's paper, that's... Yep. Uh, read all about it there. Thanks, yes, Barry. thank you. <laughs> Time now for local weather. This 39 Dunedin News weather update proudly brought to you in association with Silverhorns Emu Oil. Here's our city view. It's taken of White Island. Around the city at 3 o'clock today, 18 degrees for the central city and the Tyree, 19 at the gardens. To the Otago Pallet Fires tidal and fishing information, high tide tomorrow morning is at 25 past 9 and low tide follows at 5 past 4. And fishing conditions look good tomorrow, particularly around 6am. And that's local news for Thursday. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.
This 39 Dunedin News Bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.